Let's hold it there. Tonight we will be discussing NDD Small to Medium Enterprise Loan Facility, and we are very happy to be sharing this virtual platform tonight with you and some of our partners and friends in the small and medium, medium enterprise community. My name is Karen Bertrand, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's activity. We know for many of you, one of the challenges that you face is accessing credit for your business financing. And NBD being your partner and your bank, we have organized this event along with one of our partners, ECPCGC, to talk to you about our partial loan guarantee facility, which we launched last year. So this evening, we hope to be an interactive session, and we'll be joined throughout the evening by some speakers. Allow me to introduce who they will be to you. We have from ECPCGC Guarantee Program, Mrs. Carmen Gomez-Trigg and Mr. Bernard Thomas the Chief Executive Officer and Chief Financial Officer of ECPCGC, respectively. We'll have Ms. Lizra Fabian, Executive Director of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. Mr. John Robin, who is the President of the Dominica's Manufacturers Association. Mrs. Kerian Remy Timothy, the Coordinator of the Dominica Youth Business Trust. Mr. Kevin Francis, the Executive Vice President of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. And from our very own National Bank of Dominica Limited, we have with us Mrs. Minerva Blanchard and Mr. Darren Pinard, Credit and Business Development Managers of Underwriting and Relationship Management, respectively. Also, there'll be opportunity for question and answer. So we encourage you to drop your questions in the box below. And towards the end of the program, we will switch over to your questions, take some live questions from the feed. So at this point in time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to the Zoom call our first speakers, Mrs. Carmen Gomez-Trigg and Mr. Bernard Thomas, Chief Executive Officer and Chief Financial Officer of the ECPCGC. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you very much for your warm welcome. Um, I'd like to say that um, National uh, Bank of Dominica is in the forefront of what we are doing at ECPCGC. They were one of the first banks to sign up with us and run our pilot scheme. And they have been there in our corner all the time. I can pick up the phone and talk to Minerva Jewel all the time. So they are a real supporter of this particular initiative. 
Um, I'm going to introduce um, our CFO, Bernard Thomas, who is going to take you through exactly what the program is about. He is from Dominica and a former employee of National Bank of Dominica. And without further ado, I'm going to have him tell us all about the program. Again, questions and answers are allowed, and we'd be happy to take all your questions. Thanks a lot, Bernard. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. And thanks for having the ECPCGC on this um, call um, this evening to explain to the public and to your customers um, how they can access the guarantee program that we have introduced to for MSME for the MSME community. All right. Um, let's. All right. So um, in 2008, um, it was realized after the financial crisis that credit to the MSME sector had dried up and um, financial institution was not taking um, the risk in the MSME sector. So the, the MSME sector found it difficult to find credit for growth of the businesses and to employ additional persons and to develop their the respective countries. Um, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, the World Bank, and six participating member countries of the ECCU, namely Governments of Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines got together and formed this corporation, this new member of the ECC, ECCB community, which is the ECPCGC, um, as a response to the limited credit in the market for MSMEs. The mandate of the ECPCGC is to promote economic growth and development in the six member territories um, by ensuring that the MSME community has adequate access to finance to support the, their, their, their projects and their programs. We offer um, guarantees, credit guarantees to the financial institution so that they are able to um, lend more readily to the MSME sector. The business model of the corporation is three prong. We have a, the guarantee um, operations section. We provide the guarantee to the financial institutions. We have technical assistance with, that we provide to both the financial institutions and the, SM, the MSME sectors. Um, and we'll go further into, into these um, areas later on. And the third component is improving the enabling environmental environment for the MSME in terms of lending and access to credit. All the operations of the cooperation are monitored and we have to um, ensure the report to the stakeholders being the, um, the ECCB, World Bank and the participating governments on the operations of, this co of the cooperation, all right? So the, the credit guarantees um, program is a tripartite arrangement whereby the corporation provides guarantee to the financial institution so that they are able to lend to the MSME sector. All right. The, um, the participating lenders like NVD um, would be the ones dealing directly with the MSME. We do not deal with the MSMEs on a direct basis. However, we provide the guarantee to the to NBD that so that they are able to deal with the with the um, MSME sectors. All right. So the to be eligible to borrow under the MSME program, um, you have to be a registered business, either a fully incorporated um, business or you must be registered. Your name must be registered. Um, in whichever jurisdiction that you are doing business, right? The annual revenue of the, of the business must not be more than $2 million. And the number of permanent employees must not exceed 50 employees. You can have, um, as part of your business, more than 50 employees, 75 employees, but the permanent employees should not be more than, more than 50. The borrower, should be able to contribute 
equity and collateral into the to the 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 business that they intend to propose to NVD. All right, we are looking for a minimum amount of twenty five percent equity and um, collateral for any business venture that that um, gets brought to us for um, providing guarantees. All right, we we would guarantee. Um, this is for profit and not for profit organization. So a church that has a daycare center um, that which they are operating to generate revenue and to as a service to the community, we would provide guarantee for a loan from NBD to that sec to that um, church to expand the daycare center. Right? We allow for seasonal repayment structures, so a, a, a loan for a company that is in the tourism sector um, can be structured so that in the, during the off season, the, the person pays only the interest and in the um, high season, they will pay principal and interest. We would support such a, such a structure um, coming from the NBD, right? Now there are, there are certain types of businesses that because of our relationship or with the World Bank, we are not able to support. Um, these businesses are excluded from, from um, the guarantee program, and that, that exclusion is, is, can be found on the World Bank website and will be on our website um, also. The business must also adhere to all environmental management framework, um, which is structured in the country of that we are, we are, we are guaranteeing the, the loan. And also the social and social management framework, as mandated by the by the World Bank, must be followed. Also, currently we have three um, products: the classic guarantee, which is the original product that was um, brought forward when we, we launched the, pro the program um, late last year. And in order to deal with the COVID situation, we have introduced two new products, which are on a twelve-month basis. Uh, the working capital guarantee program and also the startup guarantee program. The corporation charge, charges a fee of 2.3% to the participating lender, such as NBD, for every guarantee um, that is um, issued. And this fee is payable an, annually on the reducing balance of the facility. Now, the classic guarantee program, we would um, the maximum loan amount that we'll consider is $300,000, and we would guarantee 75% of that amount, which is a maximum guarantee of $225,000. There's an equity and collateral contribution that the MSME must make into the program, which is 25% of the, the um, loan amount on each, for, each, for the collateral and the equity, minimum amounts. The debt service ratio should be 1.25 to 1, and the length for the guarantee would be a maximum of 10 years or the duration of the loan, whichever is shorter. The working capital project, project that we recently introduced, um, we have a maximum loan amount of, of $200,000 and would guarantee up to 80% of that amount, which is $160,000 um, to the financial institution, such as NBD. And the equity requirement is 10%, and the collateral would be 20%. And the, the structure of the, of, the, of the loan can be such that the, there's a sinking fund which allows for an increase in the, the collateral as the business um, goes along. The debt service ratio is 1.1 to 1, and the um, length of the guarantee is for five years. As I indicated earlier, this, this working capital is um, only for a one year period and will be assessed at the end of the one year. We also have a startup guarantee program, um, which is for businesses which, are in, which have been in business for less than three months, for three months or more. Um, the maximum loan amount is $100,000 and the maximum guarantee is 80%. There's also a, 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 an equity contribution of 10% and collateral of 20% because a sinking fund um, um, requirement to increase that amount. 
the debt service ratio will be 1.1 to 1, and the length of that guarantee will be for 10 years. The use of that, that um, startup guarantee would, could be for working capital, inventory purchases, um, investment, expansion, um, and also overdraft or revolving um, line of credit. So what is the process in which um, the corporation would grant, grant the guarantee? The borrower would approach its, its uh, financial institution, it would approach NBD um, for a loan, and the NBD would approach the, the corporation to provide the guarantee on that loan that it is, it is um, proposing to give to that MSME business. All right? the, Pacific, the NBD would assess the loan based on, on the five Cs, um, the character of the, of the applicant, the capacity of the borrower in terms of running the business, and the capital or equity injection, um, the collateral which is being offered, and the conditions of the economy for the particular type of business that is being proposed. Right? The participant lender, once it is satisfied that the, the, the loan or the, the project that is being brought forward is a bankable project, um, then it would send the, the, the guarantee request to the corporation um, and the, the corporation would look at, at it, assess the underwriting, um, the soundness of the project. And um, based on that, if it, if it is satisfied that the, the, the project is a bankable one um, and it meets the standards in terms of the environmental and social protection standards, and then, and then it, would, it would be allowed guarantee to the participating lender to NBD who would um, provide the loan then provide the loan to the MSME. If the, 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 the MSME and does not go directly to the corporation as I said it about right the MSME interacts with the, the lender which is NBD and if the, if the, the MSME is, is a grief in any way there's also there's recourse um, to to us in terms of the MSME can go to the grievance mechanism that is on our website and file a grievance and we would um, look into it to determine whether it's something that 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 we could um, um, deal with. All right. Now the second comp component of the of the corporation's existence is to provide technical assistance to the MSME sectors. So what we have, we have learned um, as part of the, the, the review that was done in order to ensure that the, the businesses that we are providing the guarantee to um, are made successful. Um, we noted that the, 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 there's lack of business planning skills, um, lack of finance, lack of cash flow management and marketing by the MSME sector. Um, so these, we would provide technical assistance and training in those areas so that the MSME sector can, can improve itself and improve its credit worthiness so that it's able to access funding from the, the financial institution. Now the corporation is accountable to a number of parties, including the World Bank, the Central Bank, and the, as Nick said earlier, the participant member territories who have invested their funds into the program. Um, because of that, there's a, there's a robust monitoring and evaluation framework that is in place. And there, we have to ensure that we meet those targets or meet those goals um, in, in, in lending, in guaranteeing the lending that is done to the um, MSME sector. Now, there, there are things that the, the corporation cannot do in terms of um, the MSME sector. We cannot, we would not serve as an insurance um, company to the financial institutions for um, borrowings to or lending to the MSME sector. If the, the, the loan is not a bankable, bankable loan, then we would not provide the guarantee for that, for that um, facility. That's why we, we ensure that the, the, the bank NBD, who have the experience and the te technical um, expertise, reviews the, the facility 
prior to sending it to us so that we can, we can provide the guarantee, the guarantee on it, all right? We cannot make a, a, an auto credit with with the borrower credit with the, if the, the customer, the MSME um, does not have the management capabilities to, do, to run the business or to make the business successful, then we, we give the guarantee would not make that, that, that um, make that, that customer credit will be, right? Um, we, can, we cannot make the financial institutions better at credit risk um, by providing the, the, the guarantee. What we would do is to provide training in MSME lending to the financial institutions so that they, they build the capacity internally so that they are, more, they are better able to assess credit that is being issued to the MSME sector. Um, we will not intervene into the market to, um, demanding the, the, the rates that are, that are charged by the, the participating lender or the bank. The rate that is charged is between the MSME and the bank. We, it, it is not within our, our purview or our mandate to, to dictate to the financial institution what rate that um, the, inst the inst institution should charge on credit as all credit are different and um, the credit are assessed based on the risk that are in, in those credit, right? So this is our opening um, salvo. Um, we are open to questions at the end when, when that se segment comes along. Thank you. for a welcome at the opening. Of course, if you missed any of the details from Mr. Thomas's presentation, you could always contact us at the National Bank of Dominica Limited. Visit our website, www.ndominica.com, or call us, and we will be sure to answer your questions. Of course, you can drop your questions in the comment box on the Zoom call. So if you missed any bit of the presentation, all of the information we are sure you can be made available subsequently. Also, would like to encourage you to participate in our poll. We are actually running a poll right now. So the question is available on the Zoom call. So if you scroll down to your call chat um, options, you will see a poll button there. We invite you to take the poll and we will be gauging your responses and also your questions. There is a Q&A section towards the end. So we expect you to be interacting with us throughout this call. Um, moving right along, as I alluded to earlier in the welcome, this is a partnership, and with us, we have many stakeholder groups, including representatives of the business community. So at this point, it gives me a great pleasure to invite to the call Ms. Lizra Fabian, who is the Executive Director of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce. Ms. Fabian. Hello, good evening to everyone, and I'm really delighted to be here to represent DAIC at this very important seminar for our SMEs. First of all, I would like to acknowledge our partners at the NBD, also the ECPCGC, who we've partnered on through the Chambers of Commerce, and also partners with DHTA, DMA, and the DYBT. I would also like to take the time to recognize our members who are on this call, because I've seen a number of our members here, so I'm really grateful that you've taken the opportunity to be part of this seminar, which is of great importance to you as an SME in Dominica. I want to highlight that DIC focuses on three main pillars, our advocacy, our partnership, and our membership. And key to our members is helping to achieve the highest level of competitiveness and economic growth and development for our members. At this, well, brief um, word that I'll share with you um, this evening is what the Chamber has been doing in regards to access to finance and supporting financial management of all businesses in Dominica, our membership and other businesses. First of all, I would like to share that we've been conducting trainings in financial management for SMEs. We've also looked at costs and financial management and also record keeping as we see that these are key areas for SMEs in being able to access finance. I'm going a little deeper um, for our financial management for MSMEs. We partnered with Creed last year in 
in delivering this training. It was done over three modules. And for this, we looked at um, startups, record keeping and accounting systems where we selected QuickBooks as the, the main accounting system for this specific training. Um, in case any business would like to access this training, we encourage you to visit our DAIC, Dominica Association of Industrial and Commerce YouTube page where you can still review the material, you can get access to um, the entire PowerPoint presentation, entire PowerPoint presentation, and also um, based on the support that you indicate, um, we would be able to provide additional support in ensuring that you understand the information there. And um, we've also partnered with Caribbean Export in delivering um, six half-day trainings late last year, so that our businesses would be able to really improve. The management of the cost and financial and finances, um, even looking at break even analysis. And even one of the, the businesses on the call here tonight indicated as of earlier this week that this was extremely useful for her. And previously, we also partnered with First Caribbean to deliver a record keeping workshop that was of great value to the businesses. I would like to also share that at DAIC, we collaborate with Caribbean Export to help our businesses get access to grant financing. And in the, the last couple of years, the last few years, five of our businesses, five of our members have received grants through the Caribbean Export Direct Assistance Grant Scheme. And we do encourage our businesses to take advantage of these grants and <laughs> opportunities to be able to increase finance for the business, to get different projects accomplished, or different initiatives of the business. And we are also grateful to be able to share with our businesses more information on other financing opportunities. And just before I close, I would like to share that there is a session tomorrow, tomorrow morning, which is hosted by Compit Caribbean, where they would be providing technical assistance in the form of grants up to 160,000 to selected firms looking at the Blue Economy Innovation Challenge. So if there are any businesses here on this call who would be interested in this, we encourage you to join this call so you could learn how you could access this as well. And again, as a chamber, we encourage you to reach out to us. We're here to support you. Um, we encourage you to also join our membership. And we can be contacted at the top floor of Privo Cinema on Kennedy Avenue, or also contact us via email or the number indicated here on the screen, as well as through our handles, follow, like us on Facebook, Instagram, and you could also follow our channel on YouTube where you'll be able to get content, inclusive of content on financial management. Thank you again, NBD and other partners for bringing this important um, series to our businesses where we can understand more about the partial credit guarantee scheme, but also more of the support that's available in helping our businesses to enhance access to finance. Thank you very much and back over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Lizard, for that bit of information. We'd just like to commend the Association of Industry and Commerce for the work that they've been doing. One of the things that Lizard pointed out in her presentation was training being offered in the area of record keeping. And as a former loans officer, I can say that one of the challenges that we have in being able to accommodate all of these credit requests is that sometimes the information on the business, the financial information is not always kept properly or presented properly. So one of the, the requirements that Mr. Thomas outlined at the top of his presentation was that the small businesses who need to qualify for these facilities would have to indicate an ability to repay. And part of your indication is, is being able to present such information in your financial statement. So we'd just like to commend Lizard Fabian and the Association of Industry and Commerce for their work and for a bit of information right there. Again, we'd just like to remind you to participate in our polling questions. Of course, NBD remains your partner and your bank. So we'd really like to know what we can do to make your banking experience with us better. Um, the question is, what support are you looking from the NBD to help your business? What support are you looking from NBD to help your business? And would you like NBD to contact you about an SME loan? Yes or no? So these are the two questions we're asking you right now to go to your polling option on the Zoom call and respond. <coughs> Away. Moving right along, our third speaker is Mr. John Robin, and Mr. Robin is the president of the Dominican Manufacturers Association. Mr. Robin. Okay, um, first of all, 
I wanted to say that the protocol has already been observed, but I want to just acknowledge my um, NCD, DYBT, DIST, and the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. I must say that I'm very happy to be part of this occasion. And um, the NCB has been a partner of my company, Benjo Seamus and Agroprocessing. In fact, you have been the most significant partner in terms of our financing for the past several years. And where other, folks, where other companies have, other institutions have failed to assist us, you have, uh, you have assisted us in, in very significant ways. So we can attribute much of the success of Benjo, who, which is now Dominica's largest exporter in the beverage sector, to the support from NCD. Let me go right into the program. As I'm here tonight, I speak on behalf of the Dominica Manufacturers Association and also as Vice President of the Caribbean Manufacturers Association. And we're looking at as a, as a, as a preview of SME in the first instance. Thank you. Um, in the first instance, sorry, sorry. What I, was, what I want to say that um, small and medium sized enterprises are regarded by many as the backbone of growth in economy, particularly developing economy. It is regarded as the engine of growth in most developing economies. Um, most of the large corporations we see around the world now, they emerge in the very first instance as SME. SME support large corporation in the form of subcontractors. They supply manufactured material. They also supply customers with resources to buy from these large corporations. Generally, it has been seen that roughly 80% of all employment globally are created by SME. The benefits of SME from the research I've conducted is that SME helps in the reduction of poverty in each in practically every country around the world. It contributes tremendously to export earning of countries. It generates tax revenue to state. It facilitates improvement in infrastructure. It generates significant employment. It increases GDP, which is the total aggregation of all the goods and services provided by a country within a given year. And it generates significant foreign exchange and also improve the balance of trade, that is import versus export. According to United Nations International Development Organization, UNIDO, the classification for micro enterprises is, is considered like, is a, a company or an operation that employs less than five employees. A small enterprise employ five to nine employees and a medium enterprise employs 20 to 99 employees and a large enterprise employs roughly more than a hundred persons. Right. With respect to the challenges we have encountered with respect to um, SME accessing finances with the financial institution, generally it is, it is believed that NCD, this, um, CSME are perceived as very high risk for most of the financial institutions. As a result of, the, of this perception, the interest rate for most SMEs tend to be very high because of the risk factor. And also along with that, we find that the financial institution usually put in place several, quite several criteria to ensure that you know, the, person, the, the firms are qualified for the loan. So the, the, the requirements are, very, are sometimes very onerous. What, what also happens is that there's a very high rate of rejection of application. There's also the myth that the owners and the management of SMEs are not educated. And to a large extent, SMEs are judged by the past experience the institution have encountered with um, other related SMEs. All right. In conclusion, I just want to highlight some of the activities that the BMA has been undertaking. 
I took over as president of the DMA in September of last year. And one of the first things we did was to undertake a general re-registration of members throughout Dominica. So we have completed 80% of that. We have met with most of the support organization in Dominica that we are what we intend to work with. That is the Ministry of Trade, the Dominica Custom, the Dominica Bureau of Standard, Dexia, the OECS Export Development Unit, DIC, and the, the YBT. We hope to develop a memorandum of understanding with all these, these, these bodies because they are critical in the, Dom, in the Dominica economy and in the role they can play in terms of helping us to access financing, training, et cetera, et cetera. Significantly, we have, within that short period, which since we have taken over, we have developed what we have, we have completed in fact, a three-year strategic plan for DME. So we are in the process of seeking to implement it. The DMA as it is right now, they only have a draft constitution. So we are moving speedily to ensure that the constitution is completed and it's rat ratified. So these are the things um, we are basically working on. We want to strengthen our, the capacity of our members to be able to produce more. And also we are striving very significantly to try to access market and service those markets. However, we realize to access market, you must be able to produce at a, at a cost effective manner. So we are, we, are, we are trying to ensure that most of the manufacturing of the operations can scale up operations. And at the same time, they can scale it up with appropriate technology, not necessarily expensive equipment, but technology that, that is conducive to allowing them to achieve a significant level or significant achieve significant economies of scale. And we think that scale is critical because there are several um, factors of production in Dominica that are very expensive. And if you're able to reduce your cost, your unit cost, then you are able to penetrate market much more effectively. In terms of the plan activities, uh, we want to complete the registration by June. We want to have a, a make something to sell competition within the next two months. We want to open the De Dominica shop. That's the one-stop shop of, for manufactured product in Dominica. That is next to Dexia. We have, this, we have commenced some discussion with Dexia in that regard. We, are, we want to complete and adopt the, adopt the constitution by, by June. And we also want to significantly increase manufacturing contribution to GDP. Um, we also want to facilitate access to, to financing. And we realize that financing is a very crucial aspect of many operations. One of the um, problem we encountered and one, one of the things we think that still needs to be addressed locally is that most of the manufacturers in Dominica they lost practically all their equipment, all their, all their packaging material and their raw material during the hurricane. And manufacturers have never been given any type of package to, to reposition them to get back on track. So the manufacturing sector has, has been really, really um, trying their best to get back from that, from that hurricane, but Yet um, there was no, although there were promises to assist the manufacturers, you find that um, they, they, suffered, they suffered major losses and um, the promise to assist them to get back on track has not been fulfilled. However, one of the things, one of the last point I want to make is that in light of COVID, we have seen though that um, the banana industry had already left us and then we have invested a lot in tourism. And also we have, in, we have put a lot of trust in the CBI program, the Citizen by Investment program. But all of these areas to a large extent are challenged amid COVID. I know the Citizen by Investment program appears to be doing well, so I, I see that with a question mark. But we think that manufacturing presents the greatest potential for Dominica's economic revitalization. So we want to really start lobbying with the government for us to set up some you know, industrial estates at various points around Dominica, similar to that of the, of the boxing plants. So we realize that there are several good ideas, good products, and if we focus on those products and those ideas and give them the necessary, necessary support, we can see that manufacturing contribution to GDP increase 
significantly in the next couple of years. So we look forward to working with all our partners and the, 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 um, the, the National Development Bank and all the other partners represented here today. We think that um, Dominican people are very intelligent, very creative people. And um, like this city, we have with this city as a model, we have other companies like Benjus as role models. So we are seeking, we have also started to export significantly. Most of the companies now are exporting more products now and they're exporting to more countries. And this is because of a lot of activities that are ongoing. So we think export is the way to go through increased production. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Robin. And Mr. Robin really has been with us for a very long time. Uh, you probably pointed out him referring to us as NCB when we were National Commercial Bank. So it's been a while since we've traded out that name, <laughs> but Mr. Robin has been with us a long time and we appreciate the longevity of that relationship. And of course, all the work that he has done in his capacity as president of the Dominican Manufacturers Association. Uh, moving right along, it gives me great pleasure to invite to the Zoom call, Mrs. Kerryanne Remy Timothy, who is the coordinator of the Dominica Youth Business Trust. And we know that young people play a very critical role in the small and medium enterprise community. And she will be sharing with us on what the DYDT is up to as it relates to the partial grant. Ms. Remy. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for having the Dominica Youth Business Trust as part of this collaboration. The Dominica Youth Business Trust was launched in May 20, 2004. And the DYBT is an initiation of the Commonwealth Youth Program, Caribbean Center, and the Government of Dominica. The program combines um, attributes of several past initiatives and involves input from several institutions and donors into a coordinated program that deliver an effective package of service to young entrepreneurs. DYBT operates as a nonprofit organization and is guided by the trust deed under the laws of Dominica. We operate within the Ministry of Youth through the Youth Development Division, the Ministry of Youth Development and Empowerment, Youth at Risk, Gender Affairs, Senior Security, and Dominicans with Disability. The mission or mandate of the DYBT is to empower youth in, in realizing their entrepreneurial potential by facilitating access to financial, technical, and social assistance geared towards the development of viable businesses thereby contributing to the growth and development of the national economy. Qualifying criteria for any person who wants to get to the DYBT, they must be between the ages of 18 to 35. They have to be desirous of wanting to have their own business or start a business. They have to have at least one credible reference. They're either unemployed, underemployed, or have financial limitations. DYBT has four mandates, business training, we train young people in micro and small business development to include business management, record keeping, marketing, financial management, personal development. We have two levels of training. We have the Entrepreneurial Development Program, the EDP, which allows emerging entrepreneurs to attend a one month training inclusive of a five day residential, which focuses on their personal development and the three other weeks, which focuses on their business. We have the Small Business Assistance Facility, which focus on entrepreneurs who are already in business and they attend a three-day training. This is held twice a year. The trust also provides short-term business attachment in collaboration with private and public agencies as forming part of a practical training component. The trust too has a loan guarantee facility. In 2005, an MOU signed between DYBT, NDFD, and Aid Bank and nine cooperative credit unions. We've administered a loan guarantee facility, facilitating access to credit through a loan guarantee fund in collaboration with these financial institutions. Entrepreneurs under the program are provided security of collateral in most cases of $20,000 and fully guaranteed 100% by the Dominica Youth Business Trust. On our Business Plan Innovation Award, we also provide some grant funding to about six entrepreneurs. The DYBT has a business mentorship program. It is the trustee's charge of responsibility of establishing excellent relationship with the private sector and resource persons for the provision of mentoring services on a voluntary basis to young entrepreneurs. 
We provide business plan support and consultation. We provide young people with the necessary support to develop a bankable business plan, along with continued business support and consultation before, during, and after the establishment of the business. Um, DYBT has trained over 100,000 entrepreneurs, and we have access to 500 loans. And we have in approximately about 250 businesses who are still in operation having received our loans. DYBT is an is a accredited member of the Youth Business International. And we are also charged with the responsibility of hosting Global Entrepreneurship Week annually in November. Dominican Youth Business Trust has also taken a few new initiatives in October we launch our business advisory committee where we have four members, persons who provide bookkeeping, marketing, legal support and business advice to young persons free of charge. In March of 2019, we launched our tool library where young persons who are in the agro-processing or agriculture sectors have access to tools that they can borrow at a low rate to start their new business ideas. We have also, Launch in November of 2021, a groundbreaking for the second part of our containerized hub area, where we'll be hosting a shared production area for our agro processors and our arts and crafts. The hub is also intended to house vending booths and shared office space and training areas for young entrepreneurs. The DYBT is located at 42 Kennedy Avenue, it's the former Jay's Bookstore building. Um, you can email us at dybt at dominica.gov.dm or we can check out our Facebook page and we can contact us with the phone 266-3768 or 617-8840. This is Remy Timothy for that, talking to us about the Dominica Youth Business Trust. Again, another of our partners in our your partner, your bank, Venture National Bank, we try to engage all our stakeholders in providing the best products and services to our customers. And moving right along, winding on the program, we again encourage you to visit our Zoom polling options. So please take our two questions in our Zoom call. And of course, if you have any questions, if you miss anything, <coughs> or if you need some clarification, feel free to drop your question in the comment box on the Zoom call. Our next speaker will be Mr. Kevin Francis, and Kevin Francis is the Executive Vice President of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. Mr. Kevin Francis. Good evening, everybody, and um, thank you for inviting um, the DHTA to this uh, very important session. Um, I first want to say good evening to the to the panelists and hosts. Thank you very much. I'd also like to um, recognize the presence of um, one of my past presidents, uh, Ms. Yvonne Amor. Thank you very much. This is a very important <clears throat> session indeed, and we appreciate all the um, all the private sector participants for um, attending. So. I'm here this evening. My name is Kevin A. Francis, and I'm the Executive Vice President for the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. And I'm here today to um, just give you a brief overview about the organization and what is it that we're, um, we're doing and um, how important this, this session and access to finance actually is for us. Um, the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association is a, a nonprofit organization providing central, centralized and innovative information, advocacy, and um, leadership for the tourism industry in Dominica. Uh, we were first um, established in 1972, and it's a membership-based organization. And we've been um, doing this for almost 50 years now, just about 50 years. So we have a, a, a very, <clears throat> a very proud legacy that we are we're trying to live up to um, in terms of supporting our members. Um, as it relates to our members, um, we do have just about 100 members across uh, several different sectors, which include accommodations, other tourism service providers, like guides, dive operations, and such. All right. Uh, the DHTA, we, our mission is to embrace um, to embrace the challenges and opportunities facing all tourism stakeholders by advocating on their behalf, um, raising public awareness, 
educating members and providing marketing opportunities. And we, we, choose, we choose to do these or, or choose to accomplish these um, with six main strategies, which would include um, a seat, assuming a leadership role, so leading, um, representing um, the members and the industry, educating um, our members, collaborating with them, informing them of the important things such as this session happening within the industry and also how we can um, sustain them and, and ensure that the association remains financially viable um, so that we can continue to do what we do for the industry. Um, the, the industry does suffer from um, uh, different challenges when it comes to, to access to finance. Uh, whenever we speak about access to finance, um, I usually bring back a small anecdote that I came back with from China um, that has been very useful for, for me and the association. Um, it was an old, uh, was an old adage that said, if you wanted to be wealthy, you first had to build a road. Um, I, I, it does seem kind of um, obvious, um, but for me, uh, it, it was more than infrastructure. Um, what, what it spoke to was um, the need for access. Um, not just access in terms of infrastructure, but also access to information, access to finance. And um, I would think um, the, the rest of private sector stakeholders here would agree, you know, the barriers to entry when it comes to accessing that finance is, uh, it gets higher and higher. And um, with uh, the number of shocks we've been having over the last five years, it's becoming harder and harder for us to be able to be viable and, and even qualify for these types of assistance. Um, one of our main problems that we've been experiencing is the fact that the, the industry is capital intensive. So a lot of uh, our businesses have um, money and loans and collaterals and those things tied up with the bank. So it becomes very difficult um, for them now to um, seek more finance, um, especially when we're using these same assets to, to, to get that. So that, that's one of the things that the, the industry innately has. Um, one of the presenters, Mr. Thomas, uh, did mention the seasonal nature of, of tourism, which is also something um, that has to be planned for and taken into consideration by anybody who wants to come into the into this um, industry and um, any uh, financial institution that would like to offer you know their financial services. So um, when it comes to to that, the the DHTA has been advocating for some time now. Um, since my arrival and before my arrival in 2017, um, we've constantly had uh, talks, um, meetings. We've also had um, corporate partners who have been financial institutions as well, all in the effort of, uh, <clears throat> of being able to, to increase that, that access to the finance and, and hopefully lower, lower the, um, the barrier to entry or, or create a mechanism that is um, beneficial for, for all. So because of that in the capital intensive nature, there's also the issues of, um, of refinancing your loans, uh, which is something that um, you know, a, a lot of um, the financial institutions, especially the ones that we've been, um, we've been speaking to, um, uh, cannot do for us. So um, that, that's something that is, is, is unique to, uh, to the tourism industry. Um, there's also the issue of our capacity building. Uh, it was mentioned earlier in the presentations that um, uh, bookkeeping and record keeping and um, information about um, these financial tools and how they are used is, is lacking in the, in the um, industry. And I don't think that is just for the tourism industry, I think as a private sector on a whole. And um, what the DHT um, is, has, been, has been doing to, to kind of counteract that, is um, be able to one, educate our members, um, put on a, a few of our workshops that we um, consider our ACT talks. Um, it is a forum where our members are able to share their best practices with other members, which includes bookkeeping, which includes communication, marketing and those things so essentially what we would like to do is is help sustain the membership by members helping members really um uh in the in the past and in the future we, we've had um several great interventions i know this year we have a three-year strategic plan and um that will be touching on many different aspects of the uh, membership which includes the finance and the membership development side um one of the things that we will be um 
activating moving forward uh, is financial management training, loan coaching training, and um, being able to, to sit with um, persons, especially our members and stakeholders to go through um, what is required, um, not just for, you know, for this particular loan, but um, in terms of the um, skills, uh, the, the capacities that, that you're going to need, the documents that you're going to need, the reports and what it is that you need to produce uh, in order for you to even be considered. So I think um, that is a starting point for us this year and we hope to, to activate that successfully and uh, assist several of our members who have been asking questions about um, financing and access to finance. Um, We'll continue to do what we do for the tourism industry, which includes, you know, supporting the DIC and their endeavors and, and any other private sector business service organizations. Um, we continue to work together as a private sector to see how we can benefit um, or at least bring value and benefit to the persons like yourself on the call. Thank you, but everybody. Um, my name again is Kevin Francis. And if you'd like to get in contact with the association, you can um, visit our website at dhta.org. You can send us an email at info at dhta.org, or you can give us a, a call at 275-7454. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Kevin Francis from the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association. I would just like to encourage all of our participants on the Zoom call, you know, if you are aligned with one of the associations that we represented here today, feel free to join. From what I'm gathering, they are doing very, very good capacity building sessions, sessions that will assist you <coughs> and your business to flourish. So if you're a manufacturer, if you're in the tourism sector, if you're a young person, um, any kind of, if you're in industry and commerce, whatever your, your um, enterprise may fall, we encourage you to be part of the associations to benefit from the, the sessions and the capacity building activities that they have in store. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are soon rounding up this evening's agenda. But before we do so, our very last speakers, before we go to our Q&A, will come from the National Bank of Dominica Limited. Of course, one of our taglines in the past has been we make banking easy. And I can't think of any other easier way to get your banking done than with partial credit guarantee. <laughs> so of course, to talk to us about how the ECPCGC is making what they do possible and how you can benefit mm -hmm. from this grant, sorry, from this partial credit guarantee, uh, representatives from the National Bank of Dominica. We have with us Mrs. Nino Blanchard and Mr. Darren Pena, two of our senior managers of the credit and business development department. Okay, good evening everyone. I am Nino Blanchard and we want to extend a special thank you um, to every one of you out there for registering for this session. Our aim is to educate, our aim is to increase SME's access to finance. So tonight my role is to share with you um, information on a recently launched product. It's an exciting product which is tailored just for you. So the first thing that we want you to know about this product, the essential feature is that it is guaranteed by up to 80% by the Eastern Caribbean, the ECPCGC for short. And this guarantee, it reduces the collateral requirements, thereby making it easier for small businesses to access the funding needed to grow and enhance their businesses. The guarantee options are available for startup businesses and established businesses. And established businesses are considered those in operation for at least two years. Mr. Thomas from the ECPCGC would have mentioned the um, qualifying criteria for guarantees. Um, so we will just touch on them briefly. Um, qualifying businesses must be registered. It could be a sole trader, limited liability corporation. And we understand, understood even nonprofit organizations would qualify for guarantee coverage. The SME's annual revenue or sales, it must not exceed 2 million EC annually. And finally, the SME's number of permanent employees should be less than 50 persons. Financing under the program, it's available for almost every business need. And that includes purchasing equipment, machinery, other assets. Importantly, 
the guarantee program also considers an essential element, which is working capital. We know many of our businesses, you already have the machinery, you have the equipment, but what you are missing is some working capital support to assist you with ongoing business expenses, inventory purchase, payment of salaries, utilities. So we're happy to advise that the financing under this loan program covers these areas. And we understand that this is particularly important now that we're going through the COVID period. Many businesses need that type of support as they try to normalize. There are three categories of guarantees available. The initial offer was, is what the corporation calls the classic or standard guarantee. And that includes loans of up to $300,000. Of that, the corporation would guarantee up to 75%. Um, this offer is, however, available for only established businesses. So the standard guarantee is available for businesses that are already established for at least two years. Recently, the corporation launched a startup guarantee. And under that program, financing of up to 100,000 is available for new business ventures. And under this program, guarantee of up to 80% of the loan amount is available. And recognizing the impact of COVID-19, um, most recently, the corporation launched another product, which is the COVID-19 Working Capital Guarantee. And under this program, a maximum of $200,000 is available, um, of which we will get guarantee coverage of up to 80%. And under this COVID-19 Working Capital Guarantee Program, there is moratorium of up to 12 months available. Um, under each of the categories, you will notice that there is some level of contribution required from the entrepreneur. And this is important to the bank and also to the corporation because we want to ensure that you have some stake in your business. And that gives us some comfort in terms of your commitment to the success of your enterprise. With regards to the terms of our loans, um, I want to start off with interest rates. Um, during Mr. Robin's presentation, he mentioned that traditionally interest rates for SMEs has been high because of the level of risk um, attached to it. Therefore, we are excited to inform you that the interest rate on this facility is only 5.5%. And of that 5.5%, 2.3 is payable annually to the corporation. Therefore, essentially, NBD's rate is there about 3%. And this is just an indication of our commitment to the growth and development of the SME sector. Or the terms of the loans, the minimum loan amount is $5,000. Maximum loan amount, $300,000. The facilities are repairable up to 10 years and negotiation fees are waived under the special loan program. I know the big question now may be, how do I access this offer? Customers will first undergo an, ass an assessment by the bank for our standard loan application process. Businesses must be credit worthy. And by that, we mean the business must have the ability to afford the loan being requested. Also, the business's repayment history on loans at NBD and outside of NBD must be favorable. Requirements in terms of documents will differ from customer to customer because your needs are different. Um, however, standard information required would be financial statements, credit reports, and documents to support the use of funds, such as invoices. As part of the assessment, there is a mandatory visit to the business, and this is in an effort to help us understand the business operation better. On completion of the NBD assessment, the application is then forwarded to the ECPCGC, who will consider whether the application meets the criteria for guarantee coverage, once approved by the ECPCGC, NBD will make funding available to you. The total turnaround time for decision from the time we receive all of your documents to approval is estimated at 10 business days. In closing, we are cognizant that the needs of each business is unique 
And for that reason, we want to encourage you and we would appreciate an opportunity to speak with you one-on-one -on -one to learn of your financial needs. These facilities are already available at NBD. Therefore, please call or visit any of our branches. Thank you. We invite now Mr. Pinard. Good afternoon. And I would like to want to thank you for taking the time to be with us here this afternoon. And given the time constraints, we will only be giving you a little peek into what we look at when we consider your credit request at NBD. At National Bank, we use the five C's of credit assessment technique. We look at the character, we look at the condition, we look at the capacity, the capital, and the collateral. For your character, that, is, that speaks to your credit history. How well have you been servicing your loan in the past and how well are you servicing your current loan? And we really make no distinction between you as an individual and you as a small business enterprise. For the US or international clients, we also look at your credit rating from a reputable agency such as Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian. Under the condition, we look first at the external environment that the business is operating in. We look at the sector attractiveness. Is the sector growing? Is it mature? Is it in decline? We look at the ease of entry. How easy it is for you to get new competitors. We look at the substitutes. Are there are other products and services available that someone or the public should use instead of your products. The customers, are you dependent on a single customer or few customers or do you have a wide range of customers? We look at the government policies and programs. Are they conducive to your business? Do they create an environment where your business can grow and can thrive? We look at the competitive environment, the number of competitors, how aggressive are those competitors, and so on. We look at your suppliers, the number of suppliers. Are you dependent on a single supplier? What would happen to you if um, one of your major suppliers had to go out of business or had some difficulties? How would that impact your business? We also consider the internal environment. That is, if you have a, a board, could be a small board, how many um, of directors are there? What is the experience and the qualification of the, of the directors? We look at the management capacity. What are your qualifications? What is your training? What is your experience? Have you been in the business? How long have you been in that particular business? That's when are you new to it? We look at the competitive position within your segment. Are you a market leader? Do you trail or are you very competitive? And so on. We look at the age of your business. The age will come with experience. So obviously, the longer you've been doing the business is the more confidence we have that you are aware of the pitfalls and the challenges and then that increases your probability of success. We look at your succession plan and readiness. Uh, will the debt be able to service if you are no longer able to be part of the organization? Do you have things in place where Either maybe your children or some other person can continue the business if you're unable to. Generally, we would want to have that level of confidence over the team that we're going to be giving you the loan for. Under the capacity section, we look at first at the debt service ratio. Are you generating enough cash to repay the loan? We also look at the total debt service ratio that incorporates the fixed payment of debt obligation. Do you have both your fixed payments? and your loan obligation. And then we look at your liquidity. That is how much reserves do you have compared to, what, to how much debt you have to pay on an ongoing basis. So. Then we look at your capital, your assets and your liabilities. This will determine the, how easy or how much challenges you have in terms of being able to withstand difficult times. Or are you able to take advantage of any un, un, unexpected opportunities that might be presented to you? The stronger your, your balance sheet, the stronger, the more assets you have, is the more likely you will be able to withstand um, problems if things are not like recently <coughs> over the COVID period. If you had some reserves, if you had a good um, capital sheet, then more than likely you will come out of, of, of the pandemic okay. If you were very weak, then you might have faced some more challenges than, than, than otherwise would have been prepared. And then with respect to the collateral, the last area we look at, 
the whole session has been in large part dedicated to um, ensuring that collateral is not a deterrent in terms of you and, the, and, and their visiting success. Whilst you will be required in most instances to put in some minimal capital, we, you, you should not look at collateral as something that should stop you from pursuing your dream, something that should prevent you from even approaching the bank. So what we would encourage you to do is do not make the collateral be a roadblock. Come in, speak to us, and then we will see how we can work with you, regardless of collateral position, to be able to, um, to come in and talk to us. So the, the five C's of credit, look at them um, in, uh, together as a whole, and they will lead, overall determine your credit worthiness, and it's based on that, we will decide whether or not you qualify for a credit request. Well, in parting, I want to know that we know that it is a very difficult, a very challenging thing to run a successful small business. It takes everything from you. you, you don't, it's not a nine to five job. You you at it 15, 16 hours a day on most on most parts. Whatever, as a saying from my big goals, working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. So hopefully you have the passion for what you're doing passion to make it a success and we're here to work with you to ensure that that happens. Thank you very much. Okay, and we say a very special thank you to Mrs. Minda Blanchard and Mr. Darren Pinard for sharing with us on how NBD can be your partner and your bank in making your financial dreams for your small business come true. And I know you've heard a lot about the five C's of credit and some of it might have either flown over your head or sounded a bit scary or intimidating. We just want to reassure you that although it's a mechanism that we use as a bank to assess your credit worthiness, at least don't let that be a deterrent if you don't understand certain things or if you were confused by certain things. Still come in, talk to us, give us the information that you mm -hmm. have and we'll guide so. you along the way. Mm -hmm. Take pride in holding your hands every step of but the I way think. because your journey towards your financial dreams is important to us and part of being your partner is making the process as easy and as comfortable as possible. All right, so come talk to us. We'll make your dreams come true. All right, guys, now we are winding down. We've got into the, we have gotten, sorry, to the end of this evening's um, forum. But before we depart, as promised, we have an occasion for some question and answers. During the event, we received a few questions from you all. So I'm just going to pose the first question. Go ahead. Great. So the questions are largely credit related. So I'm going to defer to my head table in the studio quite a bit. Um, so the first question is this. So the person is asking, what about small business startups that do not have the means to provide the equity and collateral needed? Can your organization, meaning can NBE, consider investing in such businesses to get them started? Do you want? Can you go to the question again, Karim? So the question is, what about small business startups that do not have the means to provide the equity and collateral needed? Can NBD consider investing in these businesses mm -hmm. to get them started? Um, yeah, at NBD, we, 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 recognize, we recognize the challenges a lot of the small business owners have with collateral capital. And so we, we try our best to work with you there are ways to gather collateral as you're servicing a loan. For example, we could look to do cash um, security. We could look to build that up over the life of the loan. However, the, the, the session this afternoon with the ECPC GC was a demonstration that not just us, but overall, the entire institution, the entire industries understand the challenges that small businesses face. And we are doing all best to put mechanisms in place so that collateral itself will not be an obstruction to small business development and, 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 and success. So yes, we, we definitely do not want you to stay away because you might have less collateral than you think might be needed um, and so on. We have ways to work with you and we'd encourage you to come in and, and discuss with us. Okay, a related question. Will okay, businesses in the construction sector qualify for this facility? And please further explain and differentiate between equity and collateral requirements for the loan application. Please provide practical examples. 
So I'll take it again. Mm -hmm. Will businesses in the construction okay. sector qualify for this mm -hmm. facility? And please further explain and differentiate between equity and collateral requirements for the loan applications. Please provide practical examples. Okay, thank you for that question. That's an excellent question. So the program is not aimed at any specific sector um, or industry. We are open to all businesses. So construction, agriculture, regardless of what industry you operate in, the program is open to you. Um, regarding the question on equity and collateral, they are basically interchangeably, interchangeable. Um, examples. Um, you could be requesting a loan, let's say you're requesting a loan of 100,000 to purchase some piece of equipment. You may decide to pledge some equity um, into that investment. So you would pay up to $25,000 and request funding of 75,000. So that would be an, an example of you putting in equity. Um, another instance would be that the bank gives you the full 100,000 that you require. However, you provide collateral of up to that $25,000. The next question is, what measurement is used to determine the condition of the economy? Is this determined by NBD or the ECPCGC? Again, what measurement is used to determine the condition mm -hmm. of the economy? And is this determined by NBD or the ECPCGC? The entire credit assessment is done at NBD. The ECPCGC does not assess your, your request. The ECP, we, we do the, the analysis, we, we consider the environment, we consider the economy, um, the specific sector that you're operating in, and we look at the attractiveness of that sector. The ECP CGC is not involved in that part of the, of the application or the request. Okay, another question is, can a company acquire both the startup package and the COVID working capital package. So can a company acquire both the startup package and the COVID working capital package? I believe so. I would encourage you. I would not want to give a firm commitment um, without verification. Um, so please just come to us or give us a call um, and then we can advise you. Let's go back to you. Would also like to encourage everyone on the Zoom call that if you have questions, additional questions, or if you feel like your question wasn't um, adequately answered, you could send us an email at nbdmarketing at nbd.dm. So that's nbdmarketing, one word, at nbd.dm. So we just have a few more questions before we close off this evening. One of the questions we have is how long will the guarantee program last? How long will the guarantee program last? Okay, so there is no time frame for the classic guarantee. And the classic guarantee is the one which allows a um, loan up to 300000 So as of now, there is no time frame for that guarantee program. Um, with regards to the COVID um, guarantee, the COVID um, facility, and also the... Um, the startup guarantee, this will be offered for up to 12 months in the first instance. Okay, so again, just a reminder, if you've submitted a question and you've heard it been answered, we will again follow up with a response to you via email. So if you've sent us a question and we've responded to you, or you've heard the response this evening, we will follow up with a response via email. Okay, there's another question. Due to the COVID-19 impact on the economy, character may have been affected. Would this degrading character as a result affect access to the line of credit in the program? So the person is asking, due to COVID-19, there has been an impact on the economy and perhaps character may have been affected. So would this degrading of character as a result affect access to this line of credit under the program? Well, we, we, we do not operate in a, in a vacuum. So we understand the challenges that you, that, that you as a business owner would face. And we, in particular, we understand the situation over the past year with respect to COVID-19. 
hopefully you would have gone into the bank and um, discussed or whoever um, is your finance and discuss the challenges that you would have been facing as a result of COVID-19. And um, so we would have, we, because we had various programs and, and, and stuff in place that would help you get through the period. With that history, we would, we would take it into consideration when looking at your overall credit history. So yes, we, it, we would not dismiss the impact of COVID-19 when looking at your credit history. Okay, thanks for that. I have a, what I think is an easy question. So the question is, can repayments be made online? Can repayments be made online? Move to take that one? <laughs> uh, buy forward. Um, and the answer is yes. So the yes, you can use our mobile banking service to make, to make payments online. So that's an easy question. Anything they would have to be careful of in making payments online or you just go in and... Um, the only caution is that you don't pay on your loan, loan due date. So if your loan is due on the 30th, do not pay via mobile banking on the 30th, um, because in that case, the loan payments will be duplicated. I also want to take the opportunity to answer the, to clarify the question before, which was whether the working capital guarantee and the startup guarantee can be accessed um, simultaneously. And the answer to that would be no. The, Working capital guarantee, it's designed for businesses in operation for at least two years. So that is designed for established businesses. So for a startup, um, it would be the startup guarantee where funding of up to 100,000 is available and you could use those funds for working capital. So the use of funds is not limited. So it could be for working capital, it could be for investments, fixed investments. Okay, Minil, thanks for that clarification. Another question. Will my business qualify for an SME loan offer from NVD, given that my business has not yet generated a steady cash flow? So my business has not yet generated a steady cash flow, and I'm asking, will I still qualify for an SME loan offer from NVD? Well, in that case, assuming the business is a startup, and the funding being requested is to allow the business or will allow the business to generate sufficient cash flows and sufficient revenues to meet its operating expenses and cover the loan payments, then yes, the business would qualify for funding. Okay, thanks for that. Another one concerning the agricultural sector. Are there any funding options primarily for the launch of an agribusiness? Okay, so um, again, there is no specific sector. The program is targeted at all sectors. As long as the business is not involved in any activity that is damaging to the environment, which is a World Bank restriction, um, this loan facility is available to all sectors. Okay, and a very, very good question because someone was trying to distinguish between the, the, the partial guarantee and a grant. So the question is, do we do grant funding? No, it's not, it's not a grant facility. Um, it is a facility that allows you to access loans, overdrafts with reduced security requirements, but it is not a grant. There's no grant funding elements to this. Okay, so thanks for that, Minerva. And just another clarification, if you've submitted a question and you have not gotten a response this evening, then we will respond to you via email subsequently. So if you have any question that you have not heard a response to or you have a question, you can send them to NBD Marketing. That's NBD Marketing, one word, at nbd.dm. And we are rounding up. I believe we have exhausted all our questions. Any more questions from the call? No? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd just like to say a very special thank you to all of you for being part of this forum this evening, this virtual event. In a special way, we'd like to thank all our speakers, Mrs. Carmen gomez Strig and Mr. Bernard Thomas of the ECPCGC, Ms. Lizra Fabian, Executive Director of the Dominica Association of Industry and Commerce, Mr. John Robin, President of the Dominica Manufacturers Association, Mrs. Kerry and Remy Timothy, coordinator of the Dominica Youth Business Trust, Mr. Kevin Francis, executive vice president of the Dominica Hotel and Tourism Association, 
and Mrs. Minerva Blanchard and Mr. Darren Pinard, Senior Credit and Business Development Managers at the National Bank of Dominica Limited. We also would like to say a very special thank you to our NBD marketing team who is in studio and our call is supported by Vibian TV. Did I get it right? Is it Vibian TV? Quick Links Production. We also like to encourage all of you on the call to visit our website for more information. That's www.nbdominica.com, www.nbdominica.com for more information. We would just like to say again, thank you to all of you who have been part of this call this evening. And we encourage you to find out more information on this. You could visit our website and come in to talk to us about the ECPCGC partial grant facility.